Hey, look big. What's your max bench? What's your max bench? What's your max bench? Every time, even with benching every workout, I get nowhere. The gym bros of this world are too cruel. It's just a lift, bro. It's not just a lift. <laughs> the bench press is the staple of a gym bro. It's one of the three iconic lifts, and if I must say, it's the best lift. Achieving a 225 bench is like achieving manhood. Holy shit! But how do you increase your bench press? Well, today I'll show you. Today we'll be talking about how to rapidly increase your bench press. Hi, my name is Nicholas Bird, and at 16, at 150 pounds body weight, I benched 315. I also set the AAU single bench world record for my age and weight class, so you know I know a lot about bench press. And today, I'll be showing you how to rapidly increase your bench press through five parts. Form, training techniques, frequency, supporting muscle groups, and nutrition that will all help maximize your bench press. Okay, so first we're going to be talking about form, so if you're already comfortable with your form, you can skip to this time frame. But I think it would be good for any lifter to like just review the basics and make sure they're doing everything right and not doing anything wrong, so uh, yeah. Okay, so proper form is definitely crucial for increasing your bench press, but it's also crucial for reducing injury. I've got so many injuries over the years with bench press, so I know you definitely want to avoid this. So yeah, I'm just going to show you all the proper techniques so you don't get injured and you maximize that bench. Okay, so for your body position, you want to maintain a stable arch back. And you do this by retracting your shoulder blades and putting them down. This really helps with any pain or tension in your shoulder. And if you still feel any pain or tension in your shoulder, you definitely want to check that out, you know, and make sure that you are retracting your shoulder blades and putting them down. You also want to keep your feet planted on the ground and push for just a tiny bit so you do have the tension throughout your legs. And also you want to brace your core with that arch back so you have tension throughout the whole body so you're more like a slingshot, you know? Okay, we're going to move on to hand placement. And for this, the general rule is to have it a little wider than shoulder width. But how I like to do it is put the bar on my chest and find a point where my forearms are perpendicular to my bicep making a 90 degree angle. This really helps with the wrists and make sure that your wrist doesn't get injured and also helps you maximize the amount of force you're going to put in. But again, you do want to experiment to see which position feels the most comfortable for you. So yeah. Okay, moving on. We're going to put our eyes right below the bar. And in some cases, when I don't have a spotter or have someone to lift off, I like to put the bar right below my lips just because it feels a little more comfortable for me. But after you lift the bar up, you want to lower it to your lower chest. And while you're here, you do want to make sure that you're feeling all the tension. And when you push up, you don't want to push up vertically. You want to push up more in an arc or more of a curve. And this really helps with the amount of power you can really put out. And it feels more comfortable for your body, reducing injury. So yeah, you want to push out into an arc. So the general rule is when you lift it, you want to go over your shoulders. So lower chest to shoulders. Lower chest to shoulders. Oh yeah. And I also like to lower the bar more controlled and then spring up faster. This just helps me control the weight. It makes me feel better and more comfortable. Yeah, so just that's like the general form. But remember, everyone is built a little differently. So definitely work on how your body feels and what makes you feel the most comfortable and what makes you feel the strongest. Okay, let's get into training routines and frequency. When increasing my bench press, I really wanted to bench around 3-4 to four times a week. 4 might seem really excessive, but I was going for the world record bench, so I had to increase my frequency. I would probably do 4 times a week, rest, then 3 times a week, rest 4 times a week. So I would re repeat the cycle, right? But this was really to increase it for the powerlifting meet. For a lot of you guys, you just want to increase your bench press, not professionally, not on a competitive level. So I would still say two to three times a week would be best for optimizing bench press and that's definitely something you can put in your routine. Definitely if you want, you can follow the push-pull leg routine and still do two times a week and you'll still increase your bench press up by a ton. But yeah, just letting you know, if you do want to increase your bench press, the more you do it, it's usually better. You still want to have rest days, right? So when I did bench press for four times a week, I want to go heavy on all of them. I would go probably heavy on two to three of them and have the rest for like form and just activation muscle 
to really get the mind muscle connection there is a point where i would be in class right and i'll be writing papers or something and i would be activating my chest muscles while writing my essay so it's just i did the frequency to get more of the mind muscle connection than anything because rest you still want your rest that's super important but yeah okay so for the most of you guys though i'd probably be three times a week and this is how i would structure it in your routine okay so for the first day of benching throughout the week i would do more of a hypertrophy day where i would pause bench maybe eight to ten reps for around four sets going down each weight like a pyramid style training and this really helps my muscle growth and also like it's more of a slow and controlled type of process getting a lot more reps done and then I would transition this into day two where it's more of a power day where I'll go heavy so I'll do probably three to five reps pause still slow and controlled but definitely a lot heavier this day because I do want to work my strength so paused up and I would probably do this around for four reps again, decreasing the weight accordingly like a pyramid style training. And finally for the last day, day three, I would do more explosive type training where I'll do maybe five to eight reps and I'll go pretty explosive. This would really help my fast twitch muscle fibers grow and you know, it, it's more fun as well. And by repeating the cycle, it really helps your bench press go up. So I do want to go more in depth with pause benching that I was mentioning. And it's basically where you do a regular bench press, but you pause it at the bottom of your chest for around one to two seconds, then go up. This really makes it where you have no momentum to really slingshot it with your chest. And this really isolates your chest to another level and you get hella gains from this. Like actually your bench will go up so much. I've had a friend who came to me is like, hey, I'm in a plateau. What do I do? My bench is not going up. And I told him about the pause benching and just in a couple of weeks, his bench was going up 10 pounds every every time he worked out it was crazy that's just the power of pause benching and there's definitely other techniques and routines that you can incorporate it's just i personally love pause benching and i do it two out of the three times i work out bench press a week okay now let's talk about the supporting muscle groups mainly the triceps and shoulders if you ever had an experience where the bench press was very easy at the beginning of the portion but very hard to lock out that is because your triceps are lacking and this is a case with a lot of people i've definitely seen a lot of people get all the way to the middle of the bench press and just fail because their triceps could not lock out. So how do we solve this? I love to do tricep pushdowns or just close grip bench press that really helps explode those triceps and get them used to the movement of going up because your triceps do play a huge role in bench press. There was like a time where I wasn't even hitting triceps because my bench press was doing it for me. So I mean, and that just really emphasizes how much your triceps matter in the bench press. Now the shoulders are also very important for stabilizing your bench press and just making you feel a lot of better. Also, your back is engaging with the bench press, especially what I told you with the lats, like how it's more like a throw, like, whoa, you know? <laughs> so you do wanna work on those muscle groups and just doing stuff like shoulder press or lateral raises will definitely increase the stability of your bench press that will definitely make it go up. This also applies to you if it's really easy to lock out, but it's very hard to get to the beginning section of the bench press. And that's when techniques like the pause bench or isolating on the chest really helps sort out that problem. And this is also super good to get you out of plateaus. There's definitely a period where I had a plateau for like six months. My bench press was not going up and I started working on my triceps more. And I did work on my shoulders more and this definitely helped my bench press go up. Okay, and the last part is nutrition. And I know a lot of you guys are lacking on this. You might be doing everything right, but if you don't have the right proteins to really build back your muscle, your bench press is not going to grow at a fast rate, right? So what we really want to do is prioritize protein intake. Like protein is super important for building your muscles and helping you increase your bench press. It also reduces recovery time. And it's just overall amazing. And if you guys think you are eating enough protein, maybe you aren't. If you aren't seeing a significant growth in your bench press, protein might be it. So I like to structure my protein as probably one gram per pound of body weight. So I'm 155 pounds. I would probably take 155 grams of protein or a little bit more, right? Just making sure I have enough protein to really fuel the chest. And especially if you're bench pressing three to four times a week, you definitely need your recovery to be faster, which again relates to the protein intake. So yeah. Definitely emphasize your protein intake, that is going to be very important. You also want to be in a slight calorie 
surplus. I mean, that's just gonna help you grow muscle faster and just help your bench press go up. So yeah, so for nutrition, it's just calorie surplus and more protein, follow the training routines, the techniques, and boom, your bench press will go up. And I promise you guys, with nutrition, it's very important. There's been times where I worked out the same, but I just had like an extra 60 gram protein shake and my bench press would go crazy amounts. Like I remember my bench was at 255 pounds and I wasn't really focusing on the nutrition. As soon as I started hopping on those like 60 gram protein shakes, my bench started going up 10 pounds per week, which sounds like freaking insane, but I was really lacking on protein, especially my mom is vegetarian. We don't really get a lot of protein in there. So I definitely did start taking it into my own hands and started having more protein, more protein shakes. And boom, boom, boom. My bench press started skyrocketing again. And if you, even if you do follow all of these routines, the nutrition, the techniques, and like the frequency, it's not a guarantee that your bench press will go up as fast as others. Genetics play a huge role in bench pressing, and that's just something you gotta accept. For me, I have great genetics. My bench press can go up anytime I really want it to. You know, I also have shorter wingspan, so the bench press is kind of built for me, and that's why my bench press is pretty high. So don't be sad when you're you and your friends they bench the same amount, we do the same things but they have a higher bench. It's just gonna be genetics. But that does not mean you cannot have a 315 bench. Like, go on, you got that. I think anyone, no matter how long it takes, can get a 315 bench or just get a pretty high, very respectable bench press. You just have to work on it. You have to have the consistency. You have to have the frequency. You have to have the training routines. You have to have the nutrition locked down and your bench press will go up. And this is not just for bench press. This is for everything else. Like your genetics do play an important role, but come on, you can build a great body without having great genetics. And it might be hypocritical to say that because I do have good genetics, but that's just the truth. I've had some friends that take a really long time to build muscle, but when they do, they look fantastic. And you just gotta remember that you got it, king or queen, because you're better. Oh yeah. Okay, all joking aside. <laughs> That's pretty much all you need for bench press. If you already knew this, my bad. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just gonna do a short recap of like the most important things. I think the most important thing is the pause bench. Like to be honest, that has helped my bench grow up so much. And especially if you're in a plateau and you're not using pause bench really yet, use pause bench. Also, I said the second most important thing is the protein intake. Like if you're not having enough protein, your body's just not gonna be able to recover. So yeah, get those two locked down and your bench will go up. This has definitely helped a lot of my friends, so hopefully it can help you in the same way. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Oh, also, more uploads are coming soon. I've been really busy with finals and SAT, so I've been cramming it all in, but I am on winter break now, so expect a lot more videos and I do wanna be posting a lot more, but yeah, okay. Bye guys.